In the third century, there was a young man in his 20s whose parents suddenly died and was left with a large inheritance and the responsibility of caring for his sister. Some months later, this man, Anthony, was attending Mass and heard the gospel story of Jesus' command to the rich young man. If you wish to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. As Anthony heard these words, he knew Jesus was speaking directly to him. Shortly after, he gave away most of his property, sold almost everything else, and kept only what he needed to care for himself and his sister. But that's not exactly what the Lord commanded. Jesus said that perfection is obtained only if one were to sell everything and give it to the poor. Later, he heard Jesus' words from this passage. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. He immediately gave away the rest of their property and trusted his sister to the care of a convent. With this begins the story of Anthony of the desert. In the course of his over 100 years on this earth, Anthony was given many names. Anthony of Egypt, Anthony the Abbot, Anthony of the Desert, Anthony the Anchorite, Anthony the Hermit, and Anthony of Thebes. He is also known as the father of all monks and is considered the founder of Christian monasticism. Anthony began a simple life on the outskirts of town, embracing only prayer, fasting, and manual labor. He then moved even further out of town to live alone in an abandoned fort. He received rations of bread only a few times a year and spoke to the people through a crack in the wall. By this time, he was becoming well known for his faithfulness and wisdom, and people sought him out for counsel and healing. Feeling disturbed by the crowds who were seeking him out, he went deep into the desert, where he lived by a small spring of water. His life took on a rhythm of prayer and work, a pattern that continues to sustain monastic communities today. Soon hundreds of people followed his example by going into the desert to live an ascetical life of prayer and they began to loosely congregate into communities. During this time in the desert, Anthony became friends with St. Paul the Hermit. The two friends are depicted in murals that face one another in the Basilica and they are also shown receiving bread from a bird. Later, in order to assist in the fight against the heresy of Arianism, he went to Alexandria, where he worked with St. Athanasius, who was that stalwart champion of the true faith. The two became good friends, and eventually St. Athanasius would write a biography of St. Anthony. Anthony died at the age of 105. St. Athanasius, who knew him, wrote his story and said Anthony was not known for his writings, nor for his worldly wisdom, nor for any art, but simply for his reverence towards God. Anthony died at the age of 105, and his life is known above all through the Vita Antoni, published in about 357, a hagiographic work written by Athanasius, the Bishop of Alexandria. St. Anthony is remembered, among other things, as a patron saint of pets. Every year on the occasion of his feast, January 17th, they bring to bless the pets and in the countryside even those of the stables. Legend has it that while St. Anthony Abbott was traveling by sea, a sow laid a sick pig at his feet. The saint healed him with the sign of the cross, and from then on the little pig became for him an inseparable companion. One of Anthony's wise quotes tells us, this is the great work of a man, always to take the blame for his own sins before God and to expect temptation to his last breath. 
St. Anthony the Great is celebrated on January 17th. He is a patron of domestic animals and is sometimes depicted in paintings with a pig. St. Anthony, pray for us.